Good morning, good morning, guys. How are you? It's me, Rhonda. Welcome back to my channel. It has been a hot minute. No, it's not. It's been a lot longer than a hot minute since I have been on here making a video. And I have got to say, I miss y'all. I thought about you guys all the time. And I wish I had the energy to make a video. And it never happened. I prayed about the energy to make a video. I had a lot of ideas. And I never made the video. <laughs> So this is my confession video. <laughs> this is just where I am in life. And I just wanted to get on here and just give you guys an update. I don't even know if this will be worthy of sharing, but you know what? I missed you guys and I just missed talking to you and I missed sharing. And so I'm just gonna kind of give you guys a real life, non-scripted, what's been going on update. Are you ready? Welcome if you're new. Um, so yeah, let's just get started, y'all. So you know, April is my was my recovery month from the beginning of the year challenge. April is the month of all the ladies' birthdays in my family. <laughs> my mom's mom, who just recently passed, my mom me, my oldest daughter, and my granddaughter. All of us have birthdays in the month and they're all about a week apart. With that being said, there was just busyness around that. Um, even though this year we weren't as busy doing all the things, it's just a busy month. And it was a recovery month for me just mentally wise recovering from my challenge. Um, I say recovering like it really wore me out. It didn't really wear me out, but it was just a mental recovery, a physical recovery for my body. I stepped back from wor the workouts I was doing. I stepped back from my fasting and just kind of lived a little bit and just, you know, and we started another job and finished that job, then recently started another job. And y'all, and then my anniversary is the first week of May. So for the past five weeks, it has been nothing but go, 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 start a new job, finish a job, start another job. It's 92 degrees here. Yesterday was 92 degrees in Florida. And I'm telling you, all of that led up to some state of just wanting to escape from anything outside my house. <laughs> Conversation, social media, reading, anything that, that required me to be present. Y'all, I just totally went, I ain't doing it. I just, I ain't showing up for it. Um, not in a bad way, but I know you guys have to understand that and I pray that you, when you do recognize this, I pray that you step into it fully and allow yourself to step back. So you're stepping into the stepping back and recognizing that, gosh, this is just so much going on. And, um, and you know, another thing I'll throw in there is since Easter, I've been attending church on Sunday and I love this little church. Thank you for all your prayers because I know I felt them when I was trying to be discerning in, in like churches and I really enjoy this church. And so last Sunday they had, so I had been attending since Easter. So Easter, I went knowing and expecting it was going to be a little different than a regular service. And with that being said, I went the next service and they started a new series talking about um, gathering and why you come to church. And it was like, wow, this is exactly what I needed. And I think I shared that in my last video about, you know, fellowship is not only for you to receive from the preacher or the pastor, or the congregation, what is being shared. It's for you to bring your gifts to share. And I never thought about it that way. It was always just a traditional attendance, obedience type thing. And so as I grow in my spiritual journey and my faith walk gets 
you know, narrow and narrower and I start understanding a little bit more how this stuff works in our lives. And so where I thought I had to do these things traditionally to be right with the Lord, as I grow personally closer, he is telling me what he expects for my life. He's guiding me. He's shaping me personally. And so the things that I am learning for me, they fit like a glove. It's like the exact things that he is leading me and showing me and growing me in. I, that has to make sense. It just makes so much sense in my head. And so doing that, um, and then my daughter started coming with me. And I am just, I am above it. I am just so tickled in so many ways that she is starting her faith walk. One thing that I'm trying to do also as I grow is to just kind of be a spiritual mentor in um, sharing what I'm learning. And I'm leaning heavily on the Holy Spirit to guide her in her personal journey. Because what I may be going through and working on, I don't want her to think that's what she needs to be working on. Now, just like when I share things with you, it may not be what you need to work on in your life right, right then. But I hope that it will help you to open a door and to grasp that personal relationship with Jesus so that he can lead you down your own path. And so with that being said, we had, um, so we've been going since Easter and then they had like a little welcoming luncheon last Sunday. So that was fun. So there was a handful of us in there. They had um, some of the administrators and stuff at the church. They had set up pretty little tables. They made a little barbecue lunch for us. And we got to hear the backstory of how the church, you know, grew. It's, it's been there for nine years. How the um, pastor and his wife, a little, about, a little bit about their family. Um, they have a foster daughter. So it was just a nice get to know you. And y'all, then they made us go around and have to introduce ourselves. I was like, oh no. But we did it and we survived and we did not die. So yeah, that was fun. So many people in so many different walks of life seeking the only thing that can heal the brokenness in us. We're all seeking the same thing, and it was just so wonderful. So that, that's that been a, a consistent change on my Sundays. But here's also the little thing that it's caused. Now, and I share this just because I'm hoping that it'll maybe be a little inspiring and encouraging for you to gain your own self-confidence. Um, my husband and I, usually Sundays was the day that we would go to the shooting club because they're only open Thursday afternoons and Sunday mornings. And it wasn't a problem until I started having that urge to, to find a church, which it's been about, a, I don't know, months and months ago that I've been talking about trying to find a church. And my part of, I had a fear of what is that gonna do with our Sunday morning dates? Going, it's an hour drive, we would have our talk, you know, and just, you know, bond and we'd go shoot and we'd bond with the people there. We'd have an hour come home. We might stop and get, so it was just what we did on Sunday. So now how is this going to in, interrupt that? And, you know, Wade always supports what I want to do, which has really helped me to be confident in growing in my spiritual walk where he's not where I am, you know, with God right now. I can see changes in him just through my example. Um, and, and to me, that is just me being obedient to what God's calling me to do. I'm not trying to change, you know, him. I'm not expecting anything from him other than, you know, just support me in the thing, you know, that I'm trying to do. And um, he's really good at that. And the thing that I am noticing is the insecure, I, I was a little insecure about that separation because it's like, you know, you have to understand we work together all the time. You know, it's we're empty nesters, so we don't have any other um, distractions in our life. We work together, we come home, and then so 
what we would do on Sunday was kind of like our date, like an official date, so to speak. I hope this is making sense. So it, it was a little insecure for me to break away from that and put God where God says he is to be. And that is first, because once you put God where God is supposed to be, everything else will fall into place. And I am trusting him for that. And I, I do believe that because I can tell you my peace in my heart over this is growing in areas I didn't even know that I needed. Insecurities about him being away from me because, you know, my my first marriage ended in betrayal. And so Wade and I've been together, you know, married for 12 years. We've been together a little bit longer than that, but I've worked through a lot. And to, in, to even still think that I have insecurity blows my mind because I'm like, I already crossed that bridge. I thought that was already done with. But my daughter was telling me about a meme one time that she goes, just when you think that you've hit that mark, here comes the Holy Spirit with the bat going, character building time. And I was just like, I totally feel that. Because I feel like the closer that I am being pulled toward God, there's still little things that I'm noticing, like, gosh, that's an insecure thought, Rhonda. Where did that come from? So this little separation is actually a growing spurt for me. And I, I just am, I'm walking in it. I'm just, I'm having faith and I'm walking forward and believing God to bring me and to to carve me how he wants me to be. And so I'm just taking it one week at a time and um, I don't specifically ask, wait, hey, will you go to church with me on Sunday? Because it's an open invitation. I've told him, I've already said, you know, hey, anytime you want to go, let me know. You know, we'll go. But I'm not making it an expectation because I don't want to put on him um, the come out of guilt. I've got to go because my wife's going or my wife wants me to go. I want God to call him. Because when God calls him, it's going to change. He's going to change. But when the nagging wife goes, oh, everyone else's husband's going to church with them. To me, I don't think that is um, what God wants me to do. And if it does and he changes my thoughts on that and he changes my heart towards that, then I'll lean into that. But right now, I feel God leading me and allowing me to grow a little bit more confidence for whatever plan he has for me over here. When it's Wade's turn, ain't nothing gonna stop him being called to go. So I have secure <laughs> security in knowing that too. I pray over him, I pray over my family. I know God loves him. I, I trust that he's already working in their lives. And so part of my growth is letting that go and trusting God to know that when I lay my head down at night, that I can rest in the peace that I really do feel in my heart over my children, where they are, over where Wade is in his life, because that's how God worked on me. That's how he got me. So I'm not a singleton somewhere, you know, that he's, I'm the only one that's being changed by God. No, he's working his way in everyone's life according to his will and his purpose and his timing. And as long as I, I am being obedient and you are being obedient in your walk, those around you that are watching you, that, that you may not even know that you're making an impact in their life, they're watching you and they're seeing how you really change because I tell you what when you surrender and you ask God hey help me to be obedient help teach me your ways lead me in your ways you are going to change you may not think you will you may think okay well I can go to church and I can do my things and I can still live this way it will start feeling gross it will start feeling ugly y'all I can't even, even if, yeah, I had a sailor's mouth. I'm not lying. I had a sailor's mouth, a pirate's mouth, mouth, whatever you want to call it. I had a filthy mouth. I don't even know where those words went. 
I don't know where they went, but God has removed them from my vocabulary. He has removed them from any time that normally where I would interject one of those words. Like if, I don't know, if I pull, hit my hand at work or something, the funniest things come out of my mouth. <laughs> and Wade will look at me and he'll be like, you're so cute. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that don't try to have an expectation of how you're supposed to be when God calls you to change. Just fall in line. Fall in line. Allow him to work. And he's going to remove those things that you think, well, I'm going to still go out with the girls on the weekend and we're going to do our thing. It will start. He will start pulling you away from the things that aren't right for you. And you'll start seeing why. You'll start recognizing why. Well, they never really, you know, helped build me up. I was always the one trying to encourage them. And I always felt so negative and tired when I left that gathering. So, so those things will start happening. And so that's kind of been where my month, my, since I've kind of gone to church and started really being observant as, as to God's just kind of calling me and talking to me and leading me and the messages at church every single week have dropped something on my plate for me to, you know, move around with my fork going, gosh, that's so on point. Last week, uh, it, this was profound to me. He was talking about um, sin and, you know, forgiven people because what, the way he, uh, let me just say how he worded it. He worded it that the people who are in sin are hostages. And so when you look at that from that perspective of, wow, yeah, because I was a hostage in my sin. I was a hostage to my alcoholism. I was a hostage to my bitterness and anger. And, but that was all sin. I was still, I still had a good heart. I still hurt for other people. So my good personness, my, my, who I really wanted to be, the goodness in me was held hostage by my emotions and by my fears and the hurt that was done to me. And I could not get past that. And so I did things. I said things. I acted ways that I normally would not act because of the hostage held, being held hostage by that sin. And so when he said that, and he says, so when you see someone, when someone, it's almost like he's saying, Rhonda, when someone hurt you, they're held hostage by that sin. They were held hostage by that adultery, that lust, that lie, that this. That was no different than the hostage way that sin held you. It was just by different means. You were still held in that state that you could not escape. And it was by the grace of God and by your surrendering that now you're on the other side of that. You've worked through the healing and you're still working through the healing. But now when you can look at that as you kind of look around the person that may be hurting you or saying ugly things to you or talking about you behind your back, you look around that person, you see who's actually in charge. Just standing back there like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, look what I'm doing, mm-hmm. So when you can look at that situation in that way, it is just, it's changing. It's, it changes your heart to be more like Jesus because now you can love that person and really love that person as you love yourself. Love one another. God says, love one another. And you can truly love that person because you know that they're unfortunately held hostage. And some people will never break away from that. They won't see that. They won't recognize that. They won't be open to that. But you still have to love them anyway. You don't have to have them in your life. You don't have to do life with them. But you still love them. And you love them in the way that God says to love them. And so when he, when the pastor was saying that to me, I just was like, so many emotions were just unlocking on the inside. And I'm like, oh, what a weight off my back. You know, what a weight. And he also said um, that 
the, the more you walk with God, the more you choose to walk with God, the more on Satan's radar you'll be. So once he's got you walking where he wants you, he just kind of puts you on autopilot. Yeah, she's going to go out with her girlfriends. You're going to have a few drinks. You know, she's going to do whatever, whatever. Yeah, she's good. Now, who he's looking for are those who have committed to Christ, those who have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior and are seeking change and seeking transformation. All of a sudden, you are like this hot light calling to him and opposition is going to come into your life. And you have to know, you have to know that that's to be expected. So don't think, well, gosh, now I've been, you know, accepted Jesus and I'm going to church and now my car won't start. And now I'm having this problem with friendship and now I'm having this. Expect it and stand firm. Pray, ask God, okay, God, I have, I, I've made this commitment. Help me be strong. Help me walk through this because you're, don't pray for it to go away. You got to walk through it. That's how you, you get through it. You've got to walk through it. You've got to learn the, the, the character building traits that you need to have to be a strong, standing, firm Christian. And so when you get into the enemy's sight path, just beware. Just beware. Just know. Because those are the things you're going to want to read in your Bible. You're going to want to learn about. What about all this anxiety I have now? This world's falling apart. Find peace in Christ. Read scripture that will bring, that tells you that, that Jesus says, the, my peace I leave with you. He wasn't worried about nothing. He slept through storms. He, everybody else around him was worried. You want that peace. So when you commit to Christ, receive that peace because just know that you're now on the radar of opposition and just stand firm. So that was stuff I got from church. So I am growing in ways I didn't really realize that church would bring me. My mind was, I was being obedient because God says, okay, well, you're coming through here. You're coming through here. Now I want you to start fellowshipping. I didn't want to fellowship. I didn't want to be around people, but I just wanted to be obedient. And now here is what is happening. This is the fruit of my obedience is learning things, finding things in me that are still broken, that still need to be addressed and still need to um be worked through and prayed over and um, grow through. And I am just so, I'm so thankful for that. And I'm just so thankful for the way that God works in my life. And, and he allows me to share it with you guys. Even when I was feeling so numb, like numb the past month, I was even telling my friend, Maria, I'm like, I am so tired and I don't even know what I was tired from. Yes, I go to work and I work physically and I was tired of the negative in the world, I think. I was tired of all the trending things that people were starting to talk about. Okay, well, let's talk about Taylor Swift. Okay, well, let's talk about Ken, Ken Nay West or whatever. Okay, so let's everybody get on the bandwagon about this Russell Brand guy. Okay, let's everyone. So everybody's getting on the same bandwagon and all the YouTube videos were talking about the same thing and I'm just like, I am so tired of it. That is not what I want my channel to be. I don't want to get on a bandwagon. <laughs> I want to get on and encourage people like for real life, like those people's lives. I pray for them to really have transformation in their life, but they live a completely different life than I do. They live a completely different level of life spotlighting that I do. And it's really hard to relate. And so I don't need that on my radar, but yet it was all over everything. So I just kind of started getting away from social media. I wasn't responding to messages. I wasn't really responding to um, the, you know, the wanting to get on here and sure things. I just was like, I just, I just need a break. I don't know. I don't know. I hope you understand that. But I got really behind in my quiet times too, y'all. I Yesterday, I had to sit down and read three days worth of this. I didn't get behind on my actual reading plan. But look, I'm even, I'm now I'm even out here. And I just leave it open because I just leave it open. <laughs> because I just pop down here. I still get up in the mornings and I still do my um, chronological reading with Daily Grace. I still do my workbook. I'm still doing, you know, the little podcast, um, not podcast. 
it, on the U version app, they have where you follow along and with their plan and they have like a little group or whatever, Q and A or whatever. So anyway, I still fill that in. But my devotion, I would just get up and I would do my quiet time. I would do my questions. I'd look at my watch and I'm like, oh, I gotta get ready for work, but I gotta get my workout in. I just couldn't get my groove going, you know? And plus it's 90 something degrees. So we wanna be out of here, you know, early enough that we can at least get a few hours in before the sun's beating down and, may, and melting us. And so just things had shifted. And so here's the way he's like, well, why don't you just do your workout when you get home? And I'm like, dude, I'm showering. I'm putting on my night nights. And I'm getting in my bed and I'm sitting there and I'm going to eat supper. Yeah, I've been eating supper in my bed. <laughs> I literally have to, it's almost like I just want to pull my plug. My plants are su were, were suffering. I watered them good yesterday. I've watered, I've gone through my house this morning because it took an admin day. So I've watered the plants. I've paid bills. It's the ninth. What is it? The ninth. And I just now paid my bills. <laughs> I literally didn't want to even adult. I didn't want to adult. <laughs> so, and so I did get my um, Discovering Daniel, which I had pre-ordered and it was released on May 2nd, but it just came in the mail. I just opened it yesterday and I did my little short on it. It sat on my desk with all the other mail. So I had to sort through. I literally, telling you, I quit adulting. But now I would like to somehow incorporate, I've already read Reveal, Revealing Revelation, super, super good book. And so now we're gonna be discovering Daniel. And this is an, a little journal that you can get off of Amazon. This is an ESV, I think. Is it an ESV? But anyway, I think it's an ESV. It doesn't even say, why not? Oh, not, no, I'm sorry. It's a new King James version. And um, so I've already read Daniel. I read Daniel last year sometimes, sometime. And so Revelation, I want to go through. So I'm kind of like wanting to do these, this as a mini series and see how I can get through that because I love Amir. I love listening to him. I love listening to how he explains the Jewish culture, how he explains what, what's taking place in the here and the now compared to the like the way it was prophesied back in the day and and how it's unfolding i just love that it just speaks to me and um so i'd like to sit down today and start reading that in the afternoon in my little she shed but it's going to have to get cooler than 90 degrees before i do that but um, so anyway, you guys, I just wanted to jump on here and say, hey, and just kind of give you a quick little update about where I'm at and just encourage you not to give up. Just just sit with yourself sometimes and just just talk to God and just ask him, you know, like, what do I need to do? Because this season is feeling rocky and it wasn't anything major. It wasn't like you know, something major happened in my life to change my life, a death or a divorce or anything like that. It literally was just everyday life started rolling a little bit like off my regular routine. I'm very routine. Um, I like to keep a schedule. I like to know, um, you know, plan. y'all, I wasn't even meal planning. I'm, I totally just went off the deep end. And in the beginning, it feels good, but after a while, if you're a scheduler like me or a routine person or like to kind of be organized like that, after a few days, it discombobulates you. It really does. It, it, it makes, and I can be 15 minutes late getting my morning started and I will feel behind all day long, even though I'm not. It's just, it's like an inner something within me. And um, so I was kind of rebuilding from that, just trying to play catch up. And I woke up Monday morning on the 6th and had a new workout plan scheduled. I had got my mindset, okay, so this is what we're doing today because my anniversary was the 5th. And to me, that was like the end of a book. <laughs> I was like, okay, we made it through all the birthdays in April. We made it to my anniversary. The book is closed. Let's start a new one. So Monday was the first of the new book. And I just love that refreshness. 
Um, so talking about a reset, I really haven't reset anything. I'm just trying to catch up to what I was already doing. So nothing new there, nothing new in supplements. Um, just kind of going back to my old, happy, comfortable, but yet changing routine. I still do my quiet time. I still do my workouts. I still have those things that are staples in my life because it's my lifestyle. Um, and I, and I just want to find time to continue to grow and continue to step into, you know, God's, God's will for me and to share things that I feel he puts on my heart. Um, you know, and I, I started, I don't know if any of you guys do beach body, but, um, I have been an avid beach body goer since I was a coach way back in God, 2008, I think I was. And then I quit coaching and just kept on with the having the membership in the programs. But I went back to an oldie but goodie, 21 day fix. But this one is in real time. So these are new workouts for me that I haven't done before. But the, the, the thing that I am getting from this also is that when Autumn is talking and she's, you know, talking to us and just kind of giving us like these little pep talks to keep us motivated, so much of what she's saying is hitting me in a different way. Um, now, if you do health and well, or health and fitness your, your whole life, you kind of get into the mundane thinking of, well, I already know that. Well, I already know that. I already do that. So sometimes you become numb to anything new coming in because you're expecting it to be something that you've already heard before. Calories in, calories out, muscle burns fat, and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes you need to like have a whole, okay, I'm gonna come in as a beginner. And that's what she said in the beginning of this workout program. She said, listen, we've been doing this for nine years because that's how long she's been um, in the Beachbody program or the Beachbody arena. But what she said was so true. When you start a new program, it, you're a beginner. It's your first day. So let everything go and be a beginner. And so that's what I did. And so when I went into the first day of that workout, um, and this can apply to anything in life. If you're going in with, to a new job, but it's something you've done. If you're a nurse and you start a new position on a different floor, you're still a nurse, but it's a new beginning. You know, it's a So take away what you are expecting it to be like in, the, in that um, career at a new beginning and allow yourself to be a beginner. So if you're stepping into Bible study, even though you've been a Christian your whole life and you've gone to church and you've done things, look at it as a beginner. Pretend like you know nothing and read the scripture with new, fresh, like virgin eyes, a virgin mind. Anything that you may have thought that maybe um, the preacher has taught you Read it yourself and see if God doesn't tell you something different. So that's kind of what is a, kind of a reset for me going into this next little sprint or marathon or whatever I'll be doing. And so when she said, come into this workout as a beginner. Now she's done the workout. The cast people have done the workout because they've been setting up for the videos. Do the workout. Allow it to work in your body. Watch your form. Watch how you're doing. Make sure you're not injuring yourself. Slow down, start with light weights. Don't go in full fledged with the expectations that, oh, I'm a professional. Allow yourself to be new. And that was just so refreshing. And then she started talking about things of, when, you t when you're talking to yourself, like if you ask your, if you tell yourself, gosh, I'm so stupid. I keep, why can't I do that? You have to remember that your brain only knows what you tell it or what someone else tells it if you're like in an abusive relationship or whatever and what you allow to come in. But if you tell yourself, I'm so uncoordinated, I can never get this. When you try a new something that may call, that may call for you to be a little bit uh, more dancey, your inner self's going to immediate tell, immediately tell you, oh, you can't do that. Remember, you're clumsy. Because that's, what, that's all it knows. And so she was starting to give little examples about this. So she's saying, so if you tell yourself, I'd like to get healthy. I'd like to do this workout. But, you know, I just don't have time. Your brain's going to go, okay, well, I don't have time. And so you're going to put it off. Because that's all your brain knows. So when you ask your brain, 
or ask yourself, why can't I do this? Your brain will say, because you don't have time, remember? So it, it's going to answer your question with what you've told it, what you've trained it to do. So you have to make the little shift of telling yourself, I'm going to do 20 minutes because I'm going to make the time. And your brain will start going, okay, I got 20 minutes. I'm going to make this happen. And you do that, and then you do it the next day, and then all of a sudden you're like, you know what, I'm gonna finish this workout today. And your brain will be like, oh, okay, we're gonna finish this workout. And it will start telling you the answers that you need to hear of, do I think I can do this workout? Do I have time to do this workout? Your brain's gonna say, oh yeah, you got it. We did it before. You know, it's gonna remind you in a positive way because now you're setting new thought patterns into yourself. and. If you want to quit something, like I haven't, y'all, I haven't had a chip since Jan since I started my challenge, that 75 day hard, those things that I cut out, I have not brought back in. I am now a chip free person. And that's what I tell myself when I go online to do my Instacart and my buy again section comes up and there's Doritos and Tostitos and stuff still on there. I'm like, oh, I'm not a chip eater. So I, and I just scroll. It's just something now that I'm not. I don't drink. I'm a not. I'm a non-drinker. I don't drink. Um, I don't drink. Well, I never really drink much soda, but I don't drink soda. And sometimes people look at you like you don't drink soda. I'm like, I have no desire to drink a soda. I drink my coffee and I drink water, and it that's just. <laughs> so you can be and do anything that you tell yourself that you can do. It doesn't have to be. The, um, I'm very careful to uh, of the whole self help, the whole self thing, because I got I got really into the personal development when I was with Beachbody. That was one of probably one of the negative things of it. Even though it helped me, it made me very self reliant, and that's not what God wants. And so when that when I start hearing that coming from the conversation, I just reel it back and take it into okay. Well, I know that where my strength comes from, so I do know that. I can do that, but not on my own power. I'll just give it to the Lord and I will walk in it as if I am already that person. And then I will eventually become that person. If you want to quit smoking, tell yourself, well, I don't smoke. And then every time you go to light that cigarette, your brain's going to go, wait, but you don't smoke. It'll happen, y'all. Your brain, God is so amazing in his creating of us. We just have to utilize it. We don't use near enough of what God has given us to use. And so when you tap into that and you go, okay, God, so I'm not a smoker anymore. I'm not a drinker anymore. I don't eat chips. I don't allow that poison and, and the toxic stuff to get into my body because I'm, I'm looking at my health. I'm trying to be healthy, I'm trying to live a long life. And just when you start telling yourself that, your brain will start reminding you, oh, we don't eat that. And your taste will change and you won't want that. And Y'all, I'm just telling you, it happens. It happens. <laughs> the video's getting long. I am so sorry. But I feel like I've been away for so long. And I just have these thoughts that come up randomly throughout the day. And I could wish I could do these little short videos or little short updates. But in the thinking of them, I'm usually either on a ladder or I'm... I don't know, whatever I'm doing at work, carrying around wood, driving a little forklift, moving things here and there and have my wheels spinning. And I just never am able to like dictate it and get it down. And so anyway, when I sit here and all these thoughts start flooding in, I just wanna make sure that as rambly as the video is, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get some kind of encouragement out of it. Um, I hope I don't make it all about me. <laughs> I hope that I'm speaking to you guys and not at you guys. So um, anyway, let me know and just know that I hope to be back soon. Um, yeah, I don't, I just, yeah, I just hope to be back soon and share a little bit more what's going on. I'll try to, I'll try to find out uh, how I'm going to work this and see if it's something that, um, how I can share it with you guys because I think it would be great. If you've already, well, I can't, you probably haven't read this because this one's just come out. But if you've read this one, y'all, it's really good. It's really good. It talks about the trumpet. It talks about all the, it talks about them all. So anyway, 
Well, I best get off here. It's admin day, so I do have to go run errands. I do have to go pay some bills. I do have to get gas in my truck. So there are those things that the girl's got to do. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Drop some comments. Say hello. Um, any suggestions on a video, you guys, I'm open. If it's something that I can do, I totally want to do it. And that might be helpful for me too, so that I don't, I'm not saying that I feel stressed about trying to get a video, but I just want to make it something that's, you know, worth you while, worth y'all's while to sit and watch. You know what I mean? Um, without it jumping on the trendy bandwagon. What do you guys want to watch? What does it seem that um, would spark your interest that I could probably jump in on your interest and see, see where you're at? But anyway, you guys have a great rest of your day. I have got to get going and do my admin stuff, you know. All right, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.